So this is fiscal policy part one. How does the government stabilize the economy? And what are contractionary and expansionary fiscal policy and when do you use them? Since fiscal policy involves government taxation and government spending, let's look at how the U.S. compares to other countries. On the horizontal axis, you see government spending as a percent of GDP. In other words, how much are we spending compared to the size of our, com our total economy? The U.S. has 36% spending, 32% um, tax revenue, so we are running a deficit. We'll talk about the long-term impacts of a country that does that year after year. Uh, Japan is in the same situation as is Canada and as is France. You can see France's budget situation. Um, the deficit is about the same size as ours um, in terms of percent, but they, are, they do a lot more government spending and taxes. Some of the biggest government funding policies are government transfers and social insurance programs. The biggest sources of U.S. tax revenue, personal income taxes, are the largest at 45%, and social insurance taxes like Social Security contributions are also up there. And this is a chart showing how we spend it. The biggest chunks are Medicare and Medicaid, Social Security, Education, Defense, and interest payments on past debt. The difference between purchases and transfers are that purchases, government spending is exchanged for goods and services, and transfers, government spending that has no goods and services coming in return. You can pause here and answer this question if you like. The answer, social insurance. government programs that are designed to protect individuals and families from economic hardship. So how exactly does fiscal policy affect the economy? Well, as you recall, our GDP, our gross domestic product, is made up of four basic spending streams. Consumption, investment, government spending, government purchases, and net exports. Government spending obviously directly controls the G aspect, but it also indirectly affects how we consume and how businesses spend, that's C and I. Our incomes as households are affected by taxes and transfers, and of course business investment is affected by taxes and regulations. Government can and does shift that kind of spending and so shifts the aggregate demand curve. Now you can get this done in a number of ways. Um, George W. Bush had a tax cut during the recession that took place in the early part of his term, first term, and Barack Obama um, had the Obama expansion. So he increased government spending during the rather large, much larger recession that took place um, at the very beginning, in fact, uh, uh, was already taking place by the time he took office. The directions are important. To expand spending and expand aggregate demand, you would do expansionary fiscal policy. This is the idea that the government tries to stabilize spending. So if spending has dropped and we're in a recession, you want to push spending back up. So you would increase government spending or cut taxes. Think of it as extra fuel for the economy. Here's what it looks like. In a separate video, I cover the long-run uh, correction mechanism. The, the idea that the economy, if left to its own devices, could self-correct. Um, that is a theory, and it probably takes too long for us to wait around for. But that is covered in another video if you'd like to see it. So instead of waiting around, we would choose to stimulate aggregate demand curve. Um, you can see here the long run aggregate supply at potential output is above where currently we're at, right? So if we're currently at this equilibrium, we know there's a recessionary gap. 
We don't know exactly what happened to make it that way, but it's there. And should the um, should fiscal policy be enacted, you would have an increase in aggregate demand. So this is expansionary fiscal policy, shifting the aggregate demand curve to the right, back to potential or towards potential anyway, removing that recessionary gap, increasing output. You'll notice the new equilibrium is at a higher um, GDP and higher price level. On the reverse side, if the economy is um, growing too quickly or if inflation is beginning to heat up and policymakers decide we need to slow down spending, you could go the opposite direction. Contractionary fiscal policy is uh, slowing down spending. If, the, if, if To stabilize the economy, if spending is too high, you can pull it back. So you would cut government spending or you would increase taxes or both. And what it would look like is you have an economy that's at short-run equilibrium that is above, temporarily anyway, above our potential output. However we got here, the economy is growing faster than it really is set up to do, and so you're probably going to start having problems, the biggest of which will be inflation. And so to remove this inflationary gap, you can through the magic of fiscal policy, slow down spending, shift the aggregate demand curve to the left, and get that inflationary gap gone. Now you're back at your potential uh, output. So in the middle of all this technical work and understanding the mechanisms, there's always underlying some emotional um, and political layers, right? So most of us probably have an, an opinion about government work programs and government spending in general. How much can the government or should the government help the economy? So you might just check in and see where you're at with that. These are snapshots of uh, New Deal programs. So during the 1930s, the Great Depression, um, a lot of interesting uh, creative and new ways to get the government helping to stabilize spending uh, were invented. We hired artists, we hired people to work on dams, uh, we hired our, all sorts of um, new jobs as a way to get spending into the economy. Here's another practice question about the mechanics of fiscal policy. And this is a more involved question, but here are the different answers. This is a great video, the second in the rap battle between John Maynard Keynes and Friedrich Hayek. The link is in the comments below. Next up, Fiscal Policy Part 2. How does the spending multiplier work and how do policymakers know how much to spend? And now for something completely different and hopefully heartwarming. We're raising some baby chickens. Look at the camera. That way. Okay.